Good morning, family. I want to welcome you to another Sunday service. And not just that, another opportunity for us to come together as a community. And so you know how we do. We come together and we study the Word of God. So get your pen, get your pad if you're going old school, get your iPad or your phone if you're new school. And let's come together and delve together deeper into the Word of God. Right now with this pandemic, as we come through it and come out of it, let's see what Dad has to say while we're in the midst of it. Take a look. We, can we all, I know you're at home, and first of all, I want to invite you and thank you for being a part of this time where we come together as a community, knowing and believing and trusting that in spite of this pandemic or in spite of this new normal, he is still God of all things. He's greater than everything. So I know you are at home, and if you can, could you please give God 10 seconds of praise if you can? I know your neighbors might think something ain't right, and your babies might be trying to figure out what's happening, but could you clap your hands and say, God, I thank you. I thank you in the midst of this. You are are still great you are still holy you are still perfect you are still above all and everything and and I put you above everything I put you above what I face I put you above what I don't even understand God you are mighty you are perfect you are holy and you are everything that I need uh, it is an honor for us to be with each other again and dwell together in unison it's an honor for me to have you here and so family if we can and go ahead and turn your Bibles to John chapter 20. I want to hop right into what God gave me. Uh, I am excited and thankful for what God gave me. And I do believe that it's going to be something that's relevant to you where you are, where we all are right now. John chapter 20. John chapter 20. And if you want to really go to church at home, just stand up. Wherever you at, just stand. Just stand. Even if you're in the bathroom, stand up. <laughs> John chapter 20, John chapter 20, and when you have it, say I'm with you. Whether you know it or not, I'm going to talk to you, and I'm going to hope and believe that you're talking back to me the whole time. It's just this little thing that I do, John chapter 20, and when you have it, say I'm with you, John 20, John 20, John 20. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he said so, he shewed unto them his hands, and he showed them his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost, whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them, and whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. I want to talk to you real fast. I don't think I'll be long. I want to talk to you from the subject now and later. Now, if you grew up how I grew up, we didn't call the candy that we ate now and later. We called them now laters. But I figured we couldn't spell it <laughs> right and for you to understand it. And so the, the title is Now and Later. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you first because you've been a good, good, good father. We ask you today that you speak to us where we are. Some of us are actually walking in the deliverance of this virus. Some of us are protecting our family in it. Some of us are holding fast and doing everything we can to exist, survive, and have a good life in the midst of this new normal. But wherever we are, we need your wisdom we need your guidance. We need your fathering. We need your understanding of what to do now and all that you're getting ready to do in us later. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and thank God. Now, if you're home, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let me uh, 
start first by saying now more than ever, uh, we, we really, really need to be students of God. Uh, when I say students of God, I am not speaking from the perspective of sitting in the classroom while God is our teacher as he teaches from the chalkboard or from whichever screen that he so used, meticulously going over different points and different things in which he see fit for us to study and understand. No, that's not what I'm talking about, though he is the master Rabboni. Uh, I'm, I'm, when I say we need to become students of God, I'm speaking of God not being the teacher, but God being the subject. I'm speaking of God not being the teacher, but like the man or woman who studies psychology, God being the major. I'm speaking of God actually being the book that we read, the, the, the pages that we flip through, the, 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 ex, the excess pamphlets that's made, giving us detailed information, specifically, generally, broad, wide context, close context, helping us to really get a grasp and be clear and understand who he really, really is. And right now, more than ever, we have to become students of God, like psychology, like econ, economics. Specifically, I'm speaking of theology. But when I say theology, theology is big. Theology is vast. I'm specifically taking one point in the study of God, and I want us to focus in on it. I want us to study and focus in on who God is in the midst of trouble. I want us to take a second and, and really pay attention to and, and really study and take notes and write papers on who God is in the midst of trouble. Because if you don't understand who he is in the midst of trouble, it could cause breakdowns and it could cause clashes and it could cause you to not see eye to eye with him and it could cause discomfort. Oh, don't act like you don't understand what I'm talking about. For some of us in our own personal relationships and in relationships with family, we're going through issues where we are breaking off, where we are not speaking to our family members and not talking and communing together because we do not know who they are in the midst of trouble. I wonder if before we start getting married and before we start getting in these long relationships and before we start picking who our favorite cousin is and who our favorite sister is and who our favorite parent is, have you stopped to study who they are in the midst of trouble? Who, who they are in the midst of trouble? Who, how they talk in the midst of trouble? How they respond in the midst of trouble. How they communicate in the midst of trouble. Whether it be verbally or whether it be with their physical actions. Or whether it be just with facial expressions. Who are you in the midst of trouble? And I submit to you that for years we studied the blessing God. We've studied who we are in trouble and what we wanted God to do in trouble. But I submit to you that it is possible that we've asked God to bless us and help us out of our trouble without stopping to figure out who he is in the midst of trouble. Who God is in the midst of trouble is unique. Who God is in the midst of trouble is different. Why? Because he has a tendency of moving in a bunch of different ways. In the midst of trouble, God can appear and bless and fix it quickly like a miracle in the midst of trouble God could come and touch in a way where he bless you through process you remember the man that that was blind from Bethsaida that he grabbed his hand and walked him out and he spit in his eyes and said what did you see and when he opened his eyes he said I see men the size of trees meaning yes the man got fixed but his fixing was in process, meaning it wasn't all complete off first glance. God had to touch him again, and off the second touch, he was able to see clearly. God comes and blesses you in the midst of trouble and process. He is the way maker in the middle of trouble. He is the deliverer in the midst of trouble. He is the healer in the midst of trouble. He is the leader in the midst of trouble. But the thing I want to help you understand about God in the midst of trouble is he has a tendency of blessing you in your future 
why he's with you there in your present trouble. You'll catch me in a second. He has this thing where he'll come to you and move in your life and move in ways you couldn't imagine he could do. But the whole time as he's moving, everything about what he's doing is not for your now, but everything is about your future. If, if you can, just touch yourself and say future. Mm -hmm. Future. That means in the midst of trouble, God has not forgotten that there is a future for you. That means in the midst of trouble, God has not set his claim that what you are dealing with right now is all you're going to deal with. You still have a future. And I submit to you that don't allow your eyes to get totally locked and dead set on what you face right now, that you still have a future. You still got people you're going to see. You still got places you got to go. You still got a person purpose you got to complete you still have a future and I speak over you that you will not lose sight of your future that if you don't lose sight I promise you you ain't the first because God hasn't lost sight you still have a future and when God comes to you in the midst of your trouble God will be now and speak to your future this is what the Bible is speaking of in the book of Psalms where the Bible says that he is a present help in the time of need. And I want you to not lock God into human words. When the Bible says that he is a present help in the time of need, you must understand that his help is present, but it's not limited to the present. It means that he could come right now and he could open doors right now and he could correct right now and he could move right now. But what he does right now is not limited to now. You serve a God that could move in your future while he is in your past. You serve a God that could speak to your future while he's in your present. You serve a God that could blow winds to your future while he's standing there with you in the midst of your present. And this is what you got to understand about God. Though you are in the midst of your present trouble God has not lost sight of your future God has not lost sight of the ram in the book oh God let me use scripture do you remember when the prophet Samuel was mad and hurt and depressed because the first man that he ever walked with as king Saul disrespected God turned his back on God and God said I'm going to reject him and while he cries God come to him in the present with an answer and say why weepest thou who I rejected I I have already in future found me a man after my own heart meaning I'm coming to you now but my response is about your later touch yourself and say now and later yeah now and later that means God can come now and bless you in your later now and later that means God could come now and bless your relationships in your later that means God could come now and heal your body in your later that means God could come now and open doors for you in your later you serve a God that's not limited to time he is eternal meaning he is in past he is in present and he is in your future which means he could come to you now and have all power to bless and touch your later. And I need a God that'll touch my later, that'll bless my later, that'll open doors in my later, that'll shift things in my later. I need a God so big, he's not limited to my today, but he has the ability to touch my tomorrow and touch my future and touch where I'm going. You serve a God that is the God of now and later why am I talking to you about this because some of you are having a conversation with God same conversation but the conversation and the crux of it is about two totally different things which means when God comes, you are speaking to him about your now. And God, I don't know what I'm getting ready to do in this pandemic. And God, my job is acting like they're getting ready to furlough me. And God, I don't know how to do and keep everybody in good health. And God, I don't know what to do about these bills. Because though my job is tripping, these bills have not stopped tripping. And they want their payment on time. And God, I need you now. And God, move now. And God, you are right now, God. And God, open doors now. And God appears and says, six months now, I want you to start a business. 
Mm-mm. God appears and saying, next year I plan for you and your spouse to talk to each other a little bit better. And God appears and God says, next year this time I need you to get a good gym membership so that you could keep yourself in good health. And next year God says, I plan after you study this book for you to start reading this book in the beginning of 2021 that you are speaking to God in pain about now and God comes and talks to you about what he wants to do in your future and now I see the problem because you are upset with God because you want an answer that fits your now and God is responding about what's coming to your f- about what's coming to your future Before I move forward and prove this, I want to tell you why. Do not think that God is ignorant of what you face. Do not think that God has somehow drew a blinded eye to what you face right now. That's not it. It's just that God has already... God, that God has already moved on your behalf and God does not spend time talking to you about things that's already been checked already been healed already been corrected God speaks to you about what's to come and I speak over some of you that you are already healed while God is talking to you about your next move that you are already fixed while God is talking to you about your next that you are already mo- uh. I got to stop before I get too excited and throw this mic in the air. God is convinced that his power works and he's already moved on your behalf. He's already shifted things for you. He's already snatched the power out of the enemy. He's already stood and had your back. He's already shifted everything you did with. He's already paid the bills before they got paid. He's already... And this is what you have to understand. God is not going to waste good time talking to you about something that's already been covered. Touch yourself and say it's already been covered. Yeah, 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 yeah. My fears have already been covered. These relationship issues have already been covered. My health scare has already been covered. This situation of me trying to figure out, will I get my job back after this or will I go somewhere else when this is over? It's already been covered. Everything that keep me up all night has already been covered. Everything that I've lost sleep over has already been covered. Every single thing that's caused me to lose my appetite appetite has already been covered and when God has already covered you when he speaks to you he speaks to you about what's to come see 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 let let me let me give you Bible and I'll get out of your way I won't be long The, the text that we just read goes quickly to the disciples these disciples walk with this guy for three years straight Three years straight of watching them closely, of sharing fish sandwiches with them. Three years straight of borrowing shaving cream from him and letting him use some of their toothpaste. And three years straight of going from city to city, hiding and running and moving and doing ministry. And the one that they believed would be their ultimate Messiah. Somehow, some way, he was slain. He was killed. He was beaten all night long. And see, it was interesting because the Jews, they always sought fit to catch Jesus and his disciples in a snare. The Sadducees and Pharisees always did what they could to catch them doing stuff on the Sabbath and to to try to totally rob them of who they are and what they are and what their agenda is and what they are called to do. And, And the guy that men left the warm bed with their wife for to serve is dead. The guy that they miss family reunions for to serve him is dead. The guy that, that they scheduled dates for and, and, and for whatever reason his needs interrupted their date. No longer here. The guy that they went to God and said, God, I thank you for sending us our Messiah 
the great, great, great grandson of David, but he's dead. The guy that they watched walk on water is dead. The guy that they seen was knocked out sleep and woke up out of the bowels of the ship and spoke to water and rebuked winds and waves and said, peace, be still, is dead. We watched them spit on him and we watched them kick him in his mouth and we watched them beat his back till skin was no longer surrounding his body. We watched him get beat to the point where we didn't even recognize who he was. The guy who spoke the word and healed the centurion. The guy who put his hand in the bucket and took two fish and five loaves of bread and fed over 15,000 people is dead. The guy who we was Seeing as the one who would lead us into the revolt of all of Rome is dead. And the Jewish men and women did it. And in the text we read, these men are barricaded in a room for fear. These men have locked themselves in the room afraid. Because they believed that if it could happen to him, and we thought he was God, then for sure... It could happen to me too. And as they sit there barricaded in the room, scared, waiting for the knock on the door, waiting to hear horses and donkeys and, and the arguments and the loud voices of men outside talking about whether or not they should set the house on fire with the men there or kick the door down or beat it open to snatch them and drag them out of there. They sat waiting for the what if, waiting for what if they come, waiting for the what if 30 men come and not 15, waiting for the what if we never get out of here and run out of food, waiting for the what if. Let me ask you, have you ever been waiting for what if? Have, have you ever been waiting for the what if that's negative, the, the what if? my family doesn't get healed and the what if my money never totally gets back where I wanted it to be the what if now if you can touch yourself and say what if yeah what what if what if these are the thoughts that you don't share with nobody the what if you got to plan a funeral and the what if I never get out of this and the what if the United States never go back to business as usual and the what if we stay in quarantine for two months and what if we stay in it for four months and what if we stay in it going into 2021 they are sitting there locked behind this barricaded door wrestling and fighting with what if and while they are fighting and dealing with the what if if the Bible says Jesus appeared in the midst of them. <laughs> God, I thank you. See, see, this is something that blessed me because it showed me a piece of who God is in trouble. They are in fear of the Jews. At the same time, Jesus has resurrected and now got all power in his hands. Which means that what you are facing in your what if, God possibly could have already fixed it at the same exact time. And you must understand one thing about God, that God will fix your problem and not specifically say he fixed it. He doesn't always come and say, I'm working it out. You have to be fully convinced by faith that you serve a God that could be on one end working while you're on the other end scared. One end moving while you're on the other end covered. One end blessing while you're on the other end stressed. One end moving in miracle while you're on the other end and can't see your way clear you serve a God that will correct it while you are sitting in the room fighting with your what if God fixed it while they were locked in a room stressed out about what if and as they sat there with their what if Jesus appears and when he appears he says peace 
Oh, God, I feel you. He says, peace. Oh, God. I don't know who's at home pulling on me, but I want to stop and speak. Peace be unto you. Peace in your household and, and peace in your children and, and peace in your marriage and, and peace in your bank account and, and peace in your health. Ah, in the name of Jesus, speak peace be unto you. He appears in the midst of men. Eleven men scared out of their mind. Waiting to be dragged out and killed. And the first thing he says to them is, peace be unto you. I want to point these two things out and I'm going to get out of your way. The text is interesting because he says, Peace be unto you. And then the Bible says, and he said, here go my hand. Here go my side. And the Bible says that the disciples got glad knowing that this was their Lord and Savior. This was the man that they followed for three years. This was the man that they submitted to for three years. This was their leader. This was their Rabboni. This was their God in flesh. And after they get glad, he said, peace be unto you and spoke. Wait a minute. <clears throat> he says, peace be unto you and reveals and then say, peace be unto you and go more into revelation, which helps me understand why in the moments of me sitting in my what if I can't hear God and get revelation. He helps me to understand because in both times he said peace be unto you, he moves. And both times he says peace be unto you, he shifts. And, and both times he says peace be unto you, he does something different. And I'm going to tell you why you can't hear from God or receive from God. is because when he speaks peace unto you, you don't receive. I came to tell you that peace is the prerequisite of a move of God. Peace is the prerequisite of a shift from God. Peace is the prerequisite of God open up blind eyes. Peace is the prerequisite of getting revelation about what to do next. Peace is the prerequisite about what he put in you and how he anointed you and how he blessed you. Peace is the re... Oh God. And I speak peace to you. Touch yourself and say peace be unto me. Yeah, I'm speaking peace be unto me. Peace be unto my mind. Peace be unto my emotions and peace be unto my body and peace be unto my relationship and peace be unto my health and, and peace be unto my family because when I receive peace, I've learned that God moves. Oh God, that God moves after peace and God heals after peace and God shifts after peace. Peace be unto you. Jesus appeared in the room and said, peace be unto you. And when they received his peace, he gave them revelation about their past. They were stressed out trying to figure out what just happened. What just happened? He's already been dead. This text starts out saying it's now the beginning of the week, Monday. He's been beaten. He's been buried. He's been totally locked in the tomb for days now. And when he appears and say peace be unto them, when they received it, he shows them what happened in their past. I came to tell you that if you receive God's peace, when he speaks, he'll give you answers about your past, answers about your childhood, answers about why your daddy couldn't be there, answers about why you wasn't your mama's favorite, answered about this argument you had two weeks ago, answered about this stupid, silly debt issue that you you couldn't figure out for the past three years, God says, let me give you insight of what just happened. He says, look at the past as I stand here in your present. I came to tell you that another thing that God is, is he is a revealer of your past while he is standing there in your 
In your present, he said, let me tell you about them holes you seen getting banged in the mouth palms. Let me tell you about that stabbing you seen me took in my side where blood and water came out. Let me give you peace about your past. Look at my hands. Look at my hands. And he said, look at my side. And after he addressed their past, and I'm almost finished. After he addresses their past, he says, peace be unto you again. <laughs> peace be unto you. Look at my hands. Look at my side. That's your past. Peace be unto you. Let me talk to your future. <laughs> Which tells me that it's possible that I need peace on multiple levels. See, I don't just sometimes get one piece that covers me everywhere. Have you ever had a piece about your past, but then when you think about your future, you get stressed out? Have you ever had a piece about your now, but when you think about how you were overlooked and not loved and not embraced, you get stressed out? And so when Jesus comes, he don't just speak peace to your now, but he speak peace to your past. And before he go to rambling about your next, he speak peace to your future. And I am so thankful I serve a God that understands the uniqueness of my stress and worry that I could be at peace about now but uneasy about my future or at peace about my future and uneasy about my past and when God comes he said peace be unto you about your past and peace be unto you let's talk about your future Jesus for the second time he didn't get senile he didn't forget he's already greeted them but he has to give peace to where they're going he says peace be unto you this powerful God so powerful that he could send peace in time so powerful that he could send peace months forward so powerful that he could send peace decades forward he is a powerful God that could stand in your now and speak peace to your 2030 peace be unto you and when he says it he says to them, and as the Father sent me to you, so do I send ye forth. And then the Bible says he, <sighs> oh God, he blew on them and they received ye the Holy Ghost. And I want to stop and tell somebody, God, that God will bless you in a way where you'll receive something before it gets open to the public. That you'll receive a blessing before everybody else could get it. Do you not understand that the day of Pentecost didn't even come yet? And here he is giving out the Holy Ghost. The day of Pentecost haven't even come yet. There was no mighty Russian wind. There was no fire clothing with tongue upon their head. And there was no spirit spirit giving utterance but here God blessed them with something that hasn't been made public yet and I came to tell some of you that God's going to heal some of your body before the vaccine get public that God is going to move and shift things in your life and in your house and in your mind and in your body before it even get public peace be unto you now, and I know you at home, and it might just be you and the baby or your family, but look over at all of them and say, peace be unto you. Yeah, I need peace to be unto me. I don't need CNN to be unto me, but I need peace to be unto me. I don't need Fox 5 to be unto me, but I need peace to be unto me. But I don't need the president to be unto me. I need peace to be unto me. And I don't need threats and plots by the enemy to be unto me. I need peace to be unto me. And I don't need more doctor's reports to be unto me I need peace to be peace uh, peace be unto you and he blessed them <sighs> he blow on them now this is going to be strange but touch yourself and say blow on me Jesus 
Yeah. Say again, breathe on me, Jesus. Yeah. I need God to breathe on me. When God breathes on me, he renews my strength. When God breathes on me, he gives me strong mind. When God breathes on me, he restores my fight. When God breathes on me, he restores my will. When God breathes on me, I got more hope again. When God breathes on me, my faith builds. When God breathes on me, I got confidence in my tomorrow. When God breathes on me, I forget about those things which are in the past and I reach for those things which are in the future. I need God to breathe on me and when God breathes on you, he, he touches the secret things nobody know about. When God breathes on you, he touches the areas that you haven't been able to reveal to your spouse. When God breathes on you, he touches the areas that you can't talk to to your family. When God breathes on you, he touches areas that you can't share with your boss. When God breathes on you, he shifts and touches and moves in the secret future things. The Bible says he walks to each and every one of them. He doesn't back down. He looks them dead in their face while they are riddled with fear and breathes one man after the other. He walks across the room and breathes. He don't speak, but he breathes. He don't move, but he breathes. What is God doing when he breathes? He's taking something that was once in him. Oh, God. And he's now putting it in the inside of you. That's why I thank God. Because I don't need a God to stand outside of me. But I need a God that will take from him and put it in the inside of me. Take your peace, God, and put it in me. Take your strength, God, and put it in me. Take your power, God, and put it in me. Take your anointing, God, and put it in me. I don't need a spectator. I need a God who will take himself and put it in me God took what was in him and breathe I need you to stand up in your house walk around your house and breathe walk around your house and breathe walk in your garage breathe walk in your kitchen breathe walk in your living room breathe walk in your bathroom breathe walk in your bedroom Breathe, walk around your house, <laughs> breathe. I need to take what was in me and put it on the outside. And put it on the outside of me. God walked and looked at every one of them in their face. Unmoved by their issues. Unmoved by their enemy unmoved by their threat and takes the breath that was in him and blow it on the outside of him. I know where I've seen him do this before. This ain't the first time I've seen him breathe. The Bible says in the book of Genesis that he blew his breath in the man that he formed and he became a living nephesh. He became a living soul. He became a new being. Now I get this whole born again thing and I get this whole new creature thing because when God blows, you are anew. That's why I need God to blow in my mind so that my mind could get renewed. That's why I need God to blow in my body so that my body could get renewed. That's why I need God to blow in my relationship so that my relations keep renewed. I don't need somebody spectating running their mouth. I need God to blow. And in my conclusion, he blow on them. And they receive the Holy Ghost. And he reminds them of a power they have that don't fit now and don't fit their past. He says to men hiding present day out of fear of present day Jews. He speaks to them and says, and by the way, whosoever sins ye remit. <laughs> 
they are related. And whoever sins ye receive as thus. They are received. Wait a minute. Why is he talking about men in a present day threat about sins and the remissions of sins in their future? It's because the answer to their prayers of now is that God would come and talk to them about their future, which in essence says to them that what you're facing right now, God, I don't get it. Let me back it back up and say it again. The answer to what they face right now manifests in physical form, and he speaks to them about their future. The answer to what they need right now is God coming to them and talking to them about their future. Somebody at home going to catch this. The answer to their right now is God coming to them speaking about their future. Why is that profound? It's profound because as he speaks to you about your future, he's in essence telling you that you're going to get to your future. That what you deal with right now will not take you out of here and what you face right now will be a blimp in your past that you will move forward that you will go far that you will keep going because the answer is about your future and I'm in essence telling you that you're going to get delivered from your right now and in my conclusion I came to tell you this Sunday morning that he is the now and later God (laughs) He is your now and later God. He is a God that will speak to your future while he stands flat-footed in your present. Now you have homework. I need you to rest in the fact that what you're dealing with right now, you have the victory over it. And open your mind and spirit to a later conversation. I speak prophetically to some of you that God is getting ready to talk to you about whether or not he wants you to stay at your job or not. Which means you need to open up your spirit and start surfing the net to who fits your criteria. I speak prophetically to some of you that God is getting ready to share with you the intricacies of how to start this business when you come out of this pandemic. Which means you need to go ahead and write your two-week notice from your job right now. I speak prophetically to those of you who are doing business that your business has been limited due to this pandemic. Start getting your numbers in line of who you plan on seeing and calling when this is all over and every day lay your hands on that paper and speak blessings be upon that I speak that right now is about your later and it doesn't mean it's because God don't care about your now it's because your now is already covered And what God is getting ready to do in your future, baby, you got to plan for it. You got to be prepared for it. You got to ask, okay, how am I going to have five business meetings with these five people? Okay, cool. I can meet both of them in this one day. I could do one for a late breakfast, and I could do one for an early dinner, and I could set them up where they're close to each other where I don't have to spend gas searching. It's time for you to use your strategic creative gift so that God could begin to to give you revelation about what he's getting ready to do. And I speak peace to you mentally and emotionally because you want God to speak to you about now, but God won't speak to you about now, not because he don't care, but because it's already fixed. So wherever you are, quiet your house, quiet yourself, quiet your spirit. I want to lead us in prayer as we get prepared of this side of our God in the midst of trouble. Father, in the name of Jesus, Dad, we need you literally in ways that we can't even describe. I can't describe what my future is like, but I need you in it. I can't describe what happened to me about my past, but I need you in it. 
I can't make sense of what I'm facing right now, but I need you in it. God, you said that you are in both past, present, and future, all three at the same time. I'm asking you, Father, to manifest in us. Speak to us. Give us clarity and understanding. Strengthen us. But before then, Dad, I'm asking you to let peace be unto everyone under the sound of my voice. To the mother that's raising the child alone, lonely, can't figure out what's next. Let peace be unto her. To the man who's a real head of his household, that all of his family leans and depends on him, and money is tripping and he's concerned and can't find peace, that while everybody else is laughing and cracking jokes, he lays up late at night holding the tenacity and the hope that his family will be okay. I speak peace be unto him. I speak peace to the couple. I speak peace to the man or woman. I speak peace to your body. I speak peace to the one that they said tested positive at, at coronavirus. I speak peace to that sickness. And I speak peace to your body. I speak peace to your mind. I speak peace to your emotional health because your emotions is out of whack and you're calm one minute and you want to fight the next minute and you want to be alone the next minute and you want company in the next minute and I speak peace and stability to you. Speak peace to your mind that's running. And even when you lay down at night, you can't sleep because it's running. And even when you wake up, you can't focus because it's running. And you can't do good with deadlines because it's so clouded with stuff because it's running. And you don't do good with plans because you're so clouded with stuff because it's running. I speak peace. Let this peace be received. Let this peace be housed in them, Dad. I'm asking you to do something weird, Dad, because I know you don't force yourself on nobody. But can you please make it so that whether they know how to keep the peace or not, let it remain in them? Dad, could you do something supernatural to the one who get peace for two seconds and have a thought and it leaves? And now they got an attitude and they offended and think somebody did them dirty and they upset and they're afraid a bit. God, could you make peace stay in them? Dad, they don't know no better. Dad, they don't know how to correct it. Dad, they don't know how to fix it. Dad, they don't know what's happening. Dad, they don't know how to shift stuff. Dad, I'm asking you, could you do a miracle in them? Especially for what we face right now. Could you do something unique for now? Please, Dad, could you do it? Give them a peace that remains. A peace that stays. A peace that's stable. The type of peace that will allow them to eat again. The type of peace that will stop them from nervous eating because they got anxiety. The type of peace that will cause them to get seven, eight hours of sleep. The type of peace that will cause them to rest while everybody else around them is stressed out and worried. The type of peace that will be what they need for right now. And I thank you, Father, for what you're doing in their lives. I thank you that after they receive the peace, they'll get understanding about their past and they'll get revelation about their future. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And thank God. Could you, I know you're at home, but could you put your hands together at home? Could we thank God for 10 seconds? I know you're at home. You might be by yourself and in the room and family don't know what you're doing and why you're clapping. But could you give God a praise for, for him being a now and later God? Could you say, God, I thank you for being a now and later God? I, could you walk up and down your hallways in your house and thank God for being a now and later God? Could you walk outside with an umbrella and walk around your house? House and say, God, I thank you for being a now and later God. Go lay hands on your kids and say, I thank you for being a now and later God. Lay hands on yourself and say, I thank you for being a now and later God. But I don't want you to not have this now and later God. Because there's somebody watching me right now that you're hearing about them, but you don't have them. You're hearing about him, but he's not yours. And so if you are not saved, 
Wherever you are, without judgment, I ain't got none for you. All I got is love and understanding. Wherever you are, I want you to repeat after me because this is real simple. And I want to introduce you to a bond that will last for eternity. I want to introduce you to a relationship with the Father that will not walk away from you or quit you or need a break from you or get tired of you or leave you. I want to talk to you about a God that when the rubber meets the roads, he don't disappear. I want to talk to you about the God that when you mess up, he doesn't say, uh-uh, I'm over you. He stands. And wherever you are, I want you to repeat after me. Say, I believe in my heart, and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the King of kings, and Jesus Christ is the Lord of lords. I receive you as my Savior, and I receive you as my Messiah who paid for all of my sins, past, present, and future. And today I thank you for the revelation of knowing that my new father is also my now and later God. I am so excited that you are a part of the family. I am excited that you are now my brother or my sister. I am excited that from this day forward, you have a father that was going to be with you. Now, your future, he's going to be with you in eternity. He's going to be with you in galaxies and universes that you can't even imagine. I'm thankful that you are now a part of the family. Now we're getting ready to have another part of worship. This part of worship is our giving. We are so thankful that in the midst of this pandemic, that God has given us instructions, that we are not taking this pandemic laying down. One of the things we do, because before this thing even started, every month we would take thousands and thousands of pounds to five senior citizens' homes that we adopted and we would feed them. I'm thankful that in the midst of this, we still have strategy to continue to serve. One of the things we do is we package up these boxes and we ship them to seniors. We ship them to where they are so they don't have to leave because, you know, due to this quarantine, we can't get to them and many of them can't get to us. And so we do what we can to be a blessing. Another thing that we do is we make sure students, students that have to remain in Atlanta and can't get home or students that relocated to Atlanta and don't have all proper finances for food. One of the other things we do is we package food for them and we drop that off to them and deliver it to them. We still are a church that's going to do what we can to be the answer to Jesus' question. Jesus said, when I was hungry, who fed me? When I was naked, who clothed me? And with your help, we could come together and still be effective in the lives of people, helping them understand that Jesus has not forgotten them and neither have us. For those of you who are tithing, we tithe and come together and give our tenth because we need it to cover our 90. I had somebody tell me, I told you a couple of weeks ago, Pastor Q, I don't know if I could afford to tithe. I told them, I don't know if I could afford not to. Because when I give my tenth, I have now the power to speak and cover the rest of my 90%. And so now that you are ready to give, and I hope you are, our giving information should have popped up. Whether it's TBH Atlanta on Cash App, GiveLify, stand and get your, fright, your phone in your right hand. And for those of you who are given via your computer, touch your computer. If you're given via your tablet, touch your tablet, touch your iPad. Here at the Believer's House, we speak the word of God over our finances. Because we want what God said he'll do in our lives if we be obedient and give to him. In concert, let's speak over it. On the basis of our tithe and offering, we prove God and we believe and expect that he will open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that we will not have room enough to receive. He rebuked the devourer for our sakes and our enemies will not destroy the fruit of our ground. Now that you did that, let's speak over this thing. Say my enemies cannot destroy it. Say this will cover me through this pandemic. Mm -hmm. And say, my barrel will not run out. 
I still will be able to save this. I will invest it. And I will enjoy my life with it. And debt will not eat it up. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Amen and thank God. I want you to know that I am dearly appreciative that you will come together in a community and worship God with us. I'm thankful for this family that we're building where we come together on Sundays and throughout the week and encourage each other and pray for each other and go over the word of God together. I speak that throughout this week, God continues to reveal to you about his now and later movement. And I thank God for your life. I thank God that this too shall pass over you and you'll still be great and walk out your purpose in spite of all that we face. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. I speak peace to you and may God be with you and cover you for the rest of your week. I love you and I'll see you next Sunday. Hey family, thanks for joining us today. If you are blessed by this today, make sure you stay connected with us. Subscribe to the church channel so you don't miss a live stream or any messages like this. Make sure you share it with a friend. I love you. Be blessed. Hope we stay connected, family.